Are you just getting started with your kettlebell journey? Then I got something for you. Check the first link in the description. It leads to a free kettlebell workout course that is filled with 30 days of kettlebell workouts. Click the link, sign up, and enjoy. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestarke. The squat variation that you're likely not doing is called the single leg or one-legged squat. I love how Pavel Tatsulin refers to the one-legged squat as the body weight equivalent of the power lift. In his book, The Naked Warrior, he talks about the one-arm push-up as well as the one-legged squat, which we refer to now as the pistol squat. Watch me demonstrate the exercise first. Now I believe the pistol squat needs two important components. First of all, flexibility and mobility. We need to be able to move our ankle joints to the utmost degree. We need to be able to move our knees to an extent where it doesn't hurt. And we have to understand how to hinge and how to bend the hip and use our greatest muscles and the strongest muscles that we have, which are located around the hip. The second part that you need, of course, is strength. And the funny thing, which might surprise you right now, is the following. I never trained for the pistol squat. I never did it. Matter of fact, years ago when I tried it for the first time, I wasn't able to do it at all. I was doing heavy leg presses, heavy leg extensions, heavy leg curls, and heavy squats and wasn't able to pull off a single pistol squat. So that's probably one of the reasons why you're not able to do it because you don't even engage into single legged exercises. Here are the exercises that I did on a regular basis to master the pistol squat without even trying it for the first place. Exercise number one is the hand-to-hand -hand swing. You pull the kettlebell into the backswing between your legs and then you breathe in as the kettlebell lands between your legs. You use your hips to thrust the kettlebell forward and as the kettlebell reaches its apex approximately on chest level, you switch hands and the breathing mechanism works like this. The second exercise that I did in order to build up the strength to become strong in the pistol squat is a goblet squat. I bring the kettlebell up onto chest level, I grab it with my palm and my fingers on the bell, I keep it close to my chest, now I stand a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, now I hinge a little bit, push the knees out, chest stays up, I'll go down as far as I can and then I come back up. There are probably even more exercises that contributed to the fact that I'm now able to do a pistol squat and that is a clean which targets your hips as well and the snatch again a strong hip builder and other exercises such as the windmill the point that I'm trying to make is that I was doing all these regular kettlebell exercises and I wasn't even engaging into any type of mobility stuff. Of course I do some mobility work when I warm up but it's not dedicated towards becoming more flexible. Another factor that may contribute to the fact that I can do the pistol squat more effortlessly is I have so-called Slavic hips. My upper leg sits very loosely in my pelvis therefore I'm able to move my hips and my legs in that regard with a bigger range of motion which probably makes it a bit easier for me to engage in single-legged exercises. But here comes the most important part as to why I believe I am now able to do a pistol squat. When you work with a kettlebell you engage into unilateral exercises. This means when I clean, when I snatch or when I do a single hand swing my body is focusing its energy only on one part of 
my legs or my arms in that regard if I do overhead movements. Another thing that might be important to improve is your ankle mobility and I want to show you two very easy to do exercises. The first exercise is not a mobility exercise per se, it just improves and increases the range of motion of your ankle joint without you having to do anything. So you have a wedge on the floor, now you stand on it with your heels first and now watch as I go down it's even easier for me to do. So that way you are able to simulate this type of exercise way easier because you take one important aspect out of the equation and that is a possible or potential lack of ankle mobility. The second exercise is a mobility exercise per se and I saw Squat University do it and here's my variant. You place a kettlebell on your quads and now you push your knees forward and you want to make sure that your heels do not leave the floor or the ground. Push those knees forward and come back. I think you can do all the mobility exercises in the world. If you have a certain genetic predisposition, you might have to work accordingly and understand that certain limitations are just set in place. Now aside from these kettlebell exercises that I've showed you that helped me to do a pistol squat without doing anything else, here are some progressive exercises that you might want to consider. The first one is just doing basic body weight squats and then turning your body weight or back squat into a front squat and see how you are able to cope with this position where the knee angle is closed the back angle is open and the hip angle is closed. Another variation is the lunge or the reverse lunge which teaches your body to work unilateral. This is probably one of the most referred to exercises when we talk about unilateral exercise because this leg is working and the other leg is just adding or contributing stability and has a supportive role. The final variant that I would try is a pistol squat on a box where your free leg is roaming in the air. Now you still want to mimic the proper biomechanics of a pistol squat. You don't just do these stand-up exercises or this leg lift exercises. You really want to put your whole knee and ankle joint and hip joint into this position that works according to a pistol squat. So here's what I would do. You go down and now I'm mimicking the position but I'm able to really relax my other leg. I don't have to pull it up. I can just stand here and then come back up. At the end of the day, these supportive mobility and progressive exercises that I just showed you weren't necessary in my case. I just did regular kettlebell training and all of a sudden, boom, I have enough strength, enough flexibility, enough body control to do a pistol squat. But since everybody has a different experience, I just wanted to provide you with some additional tools that might help you. Now here is your next step. Number one, you have to like the video and you have to consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. And then I want you to watch this video where I detail the goblet squat and teach you how to do it. The goblet squat is an easier variant that you can do but it still gives you a lot of bang for your buck.